Space Shuttle, this is Flight Safety. Keep your hands on the handrail or inside the vehicle and remain seated while in motion. You are clear for launch. Have a great flight to Starport 75. Hey, Glenn. Hey, Chris. How are you? I'm a little nervous. Why is that? Because we don't really have an agenda today, and I have a feeling we don't. something tells me this is not going to be our usual show. It is not. So I think you got something up your sleeves, as it were. Yeah. If you don't know already, which you should, uh, if you follow us on social media or just hear us talking about it, we're um, uh, photography. No, photography is our hobby. <laughs> we're right? Pretty, you just can't put an, a flag firmly in that, can you? We are photographers. There you go. Okay. <laughs> well, we are. I mean, we Let's are. Tip, the the reality is. Around it. Well, right. We, we do photography related activities. We, yeah. So we're avid photographers yes. and, and much of the subject is, uh, is our beloved Disney as well. So it's a lot of, that's overlap, right. 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 So, so what we're going to do, we're going to, um, once I get my volume set here, yeah, I was going to say um, you're fiddling with things like you're in some sort of master controlled situation. <laughs> I am right. Okay. I'm on the millennium Falcon trying to get into <laughs> hyperspace here. Yeah. Trying to figure out how to get through this line, this line to get through uh, galaxy's edge. That's what you're doing. Exactly. Thank you. See previous show. Right. So, Is that thing um, open so yet? should I be lining up? You, well, yeah. I mean, I think we kind of talked about that during last show and, and <laughs> I'm yeah, I think right now. now, I think by the end of March, you, you need to be firmly in line for that, uh, <laughs> okay. first visit. Yeah. Before we get to the other thing, that is going to be interesting to see what, like, like what even oh, Disney know, will right? allow, right? Cause there's going to be people, people with like their, with their space tents. Oh yeah. And their space, <laughs> right. their space campers. And they'd be they're, like, right. They're tauntauns. They're, like, they're yeah. going to slice open and, and they're going to be like, no, we are not the park guests you're looking for. And they're going to want to like, <laughs> just try to like hang out, right. Use their Jedi mind <sighs> tricks. To, like you want to let us in the park now. Exactly. That is going to be, I, I mean, they're going to have to come out with some kind of rules or uh, something to, to let everybody know what's going to be acceptable and, and what's not. I'm going to call it nerd stock. It's going to be like Woodstock, that is a, but, but with nerds. Yeah, that's actually. Uh, so, and Disney should be careful. You know, there were there were a lot of kids conceived at Woodstock. So, <laughs> <laughs> Disney better figure some things out there. So, anyway, I, I could digress for quite a while. But, uh, anyway, so what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, picture taking. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we are going to, this is going to be a photography episode. Hmm. We are not going to talk about a lot of Disney stuff. We'll touch on it um, here and there as we talk through, um, uh, because uh, one of our favorite subjects to photograph is, are, you know, uh, things in the park, uh, uh, park uh, buildings and attractions and inside the attractions, but, um, but also families uh, during our vacations and, and visits to the park. Um, that's, uh, that's one thing we do. And, and, uh, Chris will go to the park and he'll make a visit to Epcot and then he'll take a bunch of pictures and, and he's kind enough to, to share with me what he took. Um, and we compare notes. I do the same. And, uh, and so, so we, we've always had a pretty good back and forth, uh, about photography. Um, Chris is the one who's really, uh, taught me. Uh, a lot about photography, oh, uh, pretty much everything I know. So it's, it's, it's oh, kind dear. of like, uh, the Not Jedi true. master and, uh, <laughs> You're so and the wrong. Padawan, right? <laughs> You're so, 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 wrong. so anyway, so, th- and, and the reason we're going to talk about this is we're going to talk about this anyway. And, uh, so we said, why don't we just record it as our yeah. episode? Yeah. And, uh, and I think that's a, a good idea. So if you like photography, please stick around. If you don't, um, Please stick around and <laughs> visit listen. our sponsors, might, and then you might uh, pick up away. a few things. So, <laughs> um, so the reason we are uh, kind of interested in photography right this second is because uh, we both got new cameras. Uh, Chris has had his for uh, what? How a yeah, couple, couple months? months. Now? Yeah, a couple, yeah months. a couple months. And uh, I just jumped into the pool and uh, got the same the same camera uh, after much. Research I tried, I tried and deliberation and discussions. And so we'll, we'll, I think we'll touch on that a little bit. Um, so, but, but Glenn, does the yeah, camera, does the camera matter? 
I mean, you're, you're camera, talking about it, spending, you know, you, you know, probably spent one of your kids' child uh, or your, one of your kids' tuition money on a camera. Yeah, but is that like, true. do I have to do that to get good pictures? Is that is that the only way I can get good good pictures? Apparently not, because because uh, it, it's funny. We were talking today, and um, I, I did so. Right now, I am uh, because of the, the you know one of the things that I, I've done in the past is when I've gotten a new camera, I've started a uh, Project 365, which means uh, you take a photo a day, torturous, and you post Absolutely it. Torturous. Who could do this? It is. It is very tough. And so I was going back through my albums that I put up on Flickr uh, for some of the previous Project 365s, and I've never made it the full year. How far um, have you gone? How, how many? So the longest I went was 100. A hundred and ninety. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 64. And I called it quits. I just can't do another one. <laughs> uh, no, I actually got a little bit more than halfway. Uh, 191 days. Wow. I did. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, not bad. Uh, but I started th- that one. I started in November of 2009. So almost wow. a decade ago. But what's really cool is that I get to see because, I, you know, trying to take a, a picture a day, you, you, you know, you start to get desperate at times and you're like, Oh, what, what's around here? I could take a picture of. And by the way, I was looking looking at your feed and you know, I don't think screenshots count and you had a couple of (laughs) no, that (laughs) screenshots don't count as a photo. So I took that picture with my iPhone. So Uh, it doesn't count of the screen. So So the idea is you take a picture every day and why would, and why would somebody do this to themselves? So the reason I, I generally started when I get a new camera is it forces me to pick up the camera every day. And take a picture. And so okay. whether it's um, tonight, I went outside. My, my son was out playing with his cousins in the backyard. So uh, I got some action, action photography. I was trying out uh, one of the lenses I got. Hmm. Um, whereas yesterday, it was uh, more of a still life. The night, the day before that, it was a, a photo of, of architecture. Hmm. So, so it, it forces me to use the camera and forces me to more than anything else to learn the camera. Um, so yeah. that that's one reason. The other, the side benefit, if you know, if, if you want to call it a side benefit is that, you know, I get pictures of my daily life and my kids at the age that they are. And, um, so I can go back and look at the, the project 365. I started almost 10 years ago. And see the kids ten years younger, and and just doing daily stuff, just normal stuff, and it's it's really cool. Um, so that's tough because so, for me to do that, that like my pictures would be here's me commuting in my car, yeah. Here's me sitting well, at a desk. Here's me commuting in my car, and yeah. uh, it feels like that would be it. So it's a, it's a real challenge. So it, I, it, I commend it's you on absolutely that. I, a challenge. I, I commend you on that. That's tough. Yeah. So, um, but but you know, to your point, um, the original point of does a camera really matter? Mm. And I, I took those pictures, uh, 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 you know, 191 pictures, almost all of them with my, my first, uh, D SLR, mm-hmm. my Nikon D 50 and, and look at the pictures, you know, they're pretty good. Yep. Um, so, so no, it, it doesn't, it's not, it's definitely not all about the camera. It's, it's, um, it's, it's the knowledge uh, of photography and how to how to use the camera, how to frame things, how to uh, you know uh, edit, mm-hmm. uh, and, and so it's it's a compilation of things, uh, it, and so um, however, there are better tools out there, and and at at times you know it it's time to step up to the next thing, and that's that's what I've done. So yep. go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, I wrestled with this a lot because, you know, I, I've been, I've been into photography since I was, uh, gosh, 12 or something. Um, and so, you know, I've a lot of experience with it. And people, people ask me a lot, like, well, or, or they'll see my pictures and say, my, it, well, you must have a, a really nice camera, Yeah, which is difficult because I do, but that's not, you know, that's not the trick that makes good pictures. And, and I know this, uh, for a fact, cause I've handed my camera to family members at, at events to you know, <laughs> take my pictures with the family or whatever. And they're, and they're horrible. So, and it's not a, not an ego thing, but just a, just to help kind of prove that out. But I, I think what right. people misunderstand is that you can take great photos with anything, right? Yes. 
but you can take great photos in more circumstances with better gear. Yes. Right. Because you'll be yes. able to take them, you know, if you have a very telephoto lens, you'll be able to get sports pictures that you just couldn't get from your phone. Doesn't mean you couldn't get great pictures at a soccer game of, of kids from the sidelines or whatever. But you would just there's no way you'd be able to get those like action shots. Right. Or, right. you know, um, you know, other specialty kind of cases like that. So it it's sort of it, if you think of it as sort of a spectrum, you know, with it with 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 cheaper gear, you're just kind of narrowing that spectrum of the conditions where you can get. Um, the pictures that you want, you know, you can always get good pictures, but if it's the, the, but if you want a specific kind of picture, you might need more gear, better gear, whatever, to kind of broaden that spectrum to increase the the, the situations or probabilities of you getting those those shots. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. I don't know if it's a good explanation, but that's uh, cause it makes it, sense it, to me. Or it's uh, you know, some people know we're in, into racing, and it's like you need a in that world, you need it, you need a good car to win. But yeah. a good car doesn't guarantee you, and you still need a driver to know how to drive. And just like in photography, you need to know composition and and editing and things like that, like you talked about. So they they, yeah. they just go hand in hand. Correct. But either way, it's still fun to buy new gear for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it it definitely is fun to buy new gear when you have the money. I mean, if you don't, it's it's a little <laughs> well, stressful. Sure. I, I will say that. So, um, but yes, it is it is fun. So. Um, so the camera that I actually, uh, can I, can I talk about that for a second and you can edit this out, but but you make a really good point. And there are lots of people, probably including me, that if somebody said, look, I have, I have mediocre, you know, digital SLR now I've got, you know, whatever the consumer entry level is for a Canon or Nikon or whatever. And I got this consumer entry level glass and whatever. And I've got, I've got some money to spend. I got like a thousand bucks I can spend, um, uh, which I get. And you know what my answer might be to them is say, take that thousand bucks and go spend it on a trip somewhere and go use the gear you have. So often, you know, investing in uh, photography may be more about getting yourself to a place to get the topic, the, the subjects that you want to get. Yeah. So kind of the, the holistic thing. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. I think that's a that's a great idea because, yeah, I mean, once that that makes. Well, OK, so for me, that makes me want to take more and better pictures is being in those situations and having my family there and wanting to take good pictures of them. Well, you know, these are going to be our memories of that trip, right? right. The rest of our lives, and and, and hopefully, um, like you know, the lives of your children, grandchildren, whatever. I mean, that's right. To, I've mentioned before how important photography is to me because it's a a pan generational thing. You know, I, I see myself yes. as the steward of the images that I inherited from, um, uh, like my grandmother was the and the avid snap shooter in, in my family, and so all the pictures that she took and and got from her family, and then you know on down the line. So uh, it's it's pretty important to me. Yeah, uh, me too. It's I love seeing the photos that my mom and dad took when we went on vacation, and uh, you know I, I want to pass like like I said I want to pass that down to my kids so they can see what I looked like as a kid. So I've you know scanned everything in. I have everything digitized. But more than that, I want them to have the photos of them you know as kids that they can show their kids right. uh, or, or as adults look back and say, Oh man, I, I remember that trip. I, yeah. I remember doing that. You know, it's funny. That's a, that's a revelation I had just a few weeks ago. It was like, I, I've been thinking like I take these pictures and I'm like, Oh, my kids will thank me someday for this. And you know, what I realized is that the ones who will thank me probably won't be them, but it'll be maybe their kids, right? Cause they'll have those right. pictures of their right. parents when they were kids and stuff. So sure. Just interesting how it uh, goes, goes through the, through the line. Yeah. So, and, 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 you know, back to your point about money and, and yes, people mm-hmm. should only spend within their means, of course, but there, there are a few things in life that I, I will always find money for. And one is books and another is, um, uh, is photography gear just because, you know, um, kind of flip side of what I said, cause it's a vicious circle here, but you know, I've, I've gone on trips where I kind of skimped on my camera gear and boy, do I, I, um, I regret it later because I'm like, man, I could have gotten a better shot if I had this and that. So, yeah. you know, it's, uh. Anyway, it's it's a balance either way, but but go ahead. So we have some new gear. What is exciting about this gear? Why why is it important? Well, for for me, it's exciting because um, it is my first full frame camera, and so you know I don't know how deep we want to get into this, but uh, the cameras that I've always had um, uh, since uh, my point and shoot days. Um, I've had DSLRs, but all of them, I've had, um, 
two Nikons and one uh, Sony, and all of them have been um, uh, cropped uh, cameras. So the sensor is a little bit smaller than what's in a full frame camera. So you're capturing um, less information and, and it's been great. I mean, I've, I've, so I think I got my first camera in 2006. It was a year after my daughter was born. And um, so it was was after she was born. (laughs) Yes. Wow. Surprising. As I go through my, my pictures, and I see that. Oh, mistake! Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell me now. Thanks. I'm pretty sure I told you that. <laughs> it's not the gear, Glenn, but it's totally the gear. Come on, man. Well, you know, and and, and so you know, not to rehash all the history, but um, but I, I was still learning, right? And and my history is, uh, I'm, I met this guy named Chris, and he was good at. You know, he, he knew photography and I had always been interested in photography, um, but I never wanted to. I knew that if I bought, uh, you know, quote unquote, expensive camera, um, I would not get the pictures that I wanted to get. And um, I didn't want and this was back in. I mean, uh, you know, my interest in photography goes back to the film days. Mm-hmm. So I always had, you know, a, a point and shoot or whatever you want to call it. So I never made the jump to uh, an SLR camera, even in the film days, because it, it was it was too complicated. It was, you know, and and film developing was so expensive. That's true. Um, yeah. So so um, I and my my sister bought. Uh, she had an SLR SLR camera, and so she actually let me borrow it for a while when I was debating on getting a um, a point and shoot digital camera in. 2000 mm. when they first came out or or go for uh an actual slr camera mm. um and so i i borrowed it for for about a month or so and i, I was right like I, I was like man I, I don't know anything about this so i went with the digital camera and so i think i made a good decision then because the digital camera was awesome mm. um and uh it, well to, to be fair back then they they weren't that awesome though but i mean well yeah I mean, looking great, at them but, now yeah. but but what it allowed me to do was to start experimenting and not having to worry about holding off on taking photos right yep which is which is the number the number i mean if there's a one single secret to taking good pictures and any good photographer will tell you this the number one single thing you can do to, to guarantee you get good pictures is just to take a ton of pictures both yeah. from a you know you learn more as you go but also just you know the law of averages you know the a blind squirrel finds acorns once in a while uh, that kind of sentiment that uh, you know just you, through the experimenting you find different compositions and then you know click 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 boom and then you find oh hey you finally hit on something and then exactly. uh, you know so the the idea of getting better photography is you just kind of reduce you know, as you're starting out, you might take a thousand pictures and have two that are really good. You hope that, you know, once you study and learn and maybe you take a hundred and you get two that are really good and you kind of cut the ratio, uh, uh um, higher, lower, whatever that you get more, yeah. more, more better ones, uh, for, for fewer shots. But that is the, the trick. So I could see that. So, so moving to digital cause film, you know, for, for the youngsters out there shooting film was expensive. I mean, a roll of film would cost you eight to ten dollars if you're getting like pro grade film and then probably equal that to have it processed and everything and you're talking 36 shots for a a big girl so (laughs) i mean i remember uh one of my trips in uh, 96 or 97 i had a film camera and i got i took an entire (laughs) my my whole thing for the uh for the trip which was a week long was 14 rolls of film which in the film (laughs) days was a massive (laughs) i mean nobody did like that but and uh, like a moron, I um, although I knew what I was doing, I, I spent to have it processed at Disney World, so I knew it was done before I even went anywhere. Uh, so it was hundreds and hundreds of dollars for uh, what would that be? Uh, Eight hundred pictures, roughly, you know, yeah, on film. Yeah. Which to, I can take that in an afternoon now at, at, <laughs> yeah. at Epcot. So no kidding. Yeah. So, but anyway, that but that does help be able to take a lot of you know experiment, try yeah, different, try different right. things. It's- so I had a, you know, an Olympus point and shoot, uh, way back when in mm-hmm. 2000. And, and so I, I would, um, I would go out and just, you know, take pictures wherever. And, and it was, it was, it was awesome to have that freedom. And, um, so, so then I, I 
tried to get more serious and I bought a tripod. <clears throat> and so I would go out to the parks and, um, try to, you know, take some, uh, take some shots at night. But if, and, I, if I'm um, sorry to interrupt, but if I remember right, yeah. the, it wasn't like a, like the tripod people are thinking of right now, which is like the full big legs, right? You, you got like a little pocketable tripod if I remember right. Right. Is that what you're thinking? Is that what you're talking about? No, I actually did have uh, a full size tripod. Oh, okay. Man, I went to Best before Buy. I knew you, I guess. Okay. Yeah. It w- well, yeah, it was. It, like I said, this was before I, I had met you. And it, so this is like from 2000 to 2003 or so. Okay. And, and I would go, Tammy and I would go out to the theme parks and I would bring the tripod and I would try to take pictures at night. And, um, some came out okay. You know, it was, it was hit and miss. And, and I would, you know, I didn't know the settings. I was trying different things. I was like, well, you know, and, and so, but I, I kept at it and, and I, you know, so I, I, I wasn't, I certainly hadn't advanced anywhere near enough to, to try to step up to anything better. Um, so that's when I met you and we started talking and everything else. And somehow we start talking about photography and, um, and you started giving me some, you know, uh, tips, pointers, lessons, whatever. And we would go out to the parks and you'd be like, Oh, Hey, you know what? When you, when you want to take a shot like this, um, use these settings. And, God, and I, would I do sound, that. I sound so bossy. God. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> hey, dummy. Do well, this. God. That's kind of what you needed to do with me. <laughs> you know me. Don't always point the camera at yourself. Right. Other right. things. <laughs> so, um, so amazingly enough, my photos got better <laughs> because I listened and applied that knowledge. And, and so, like, you know, from 2000. 3 2004 to you know 2006 um i had a uh, i had upgraded my olympus to another one and um i was getting better i was starting to understand you know uh, shutter speed and aperture and and iso and and every and you know how the camera how photography you know uh, the the basics behind photography and and you know, to show that, you know, any camera is good if you, if the person using it is, is, you know, knows what they're doing. And, you know, I hate to compliment you because, you know, that's all you need is a bigger head. But I, I remember back then being impressed with the pictures that you got out of that relatively inexpensive, relatively consumery camera that, you know, simply because you put the time into work at it, study and, you know, try different things. So, yeah. I remember especially in, you know, one of the things that those cameras were not really built to do is take like night shots and you used to, you know, put them on the tripod and do long exposures and get some mm-hmm. great results from it. So, yeah. yeah. And, and I did, I did buy a little bitty tripod so I could always have it in my pocket. Mm-hmm. And so I could take a lot of pictures at night and, and practice and, and learn how to do it. So it wasn't, you know, I didn't, uh, jump in and, you know, buy, a, a you know, an expensive DSLR to, you know, it automatically improved my game. I, I, I hopefully did it correctly and, and learned a little bit. And then when it was time to, when, when I felt it was time to make that jump, uh, you did, you counseled me and, and, and helped me understand what was out there mm-hmm. in, uh, DSLR land and, um, you know, what the cameras were like, what the lenses were like. And, and I finally made the jump. Okay, and so and, wind, winding us back to well, go ahead. No, you, no, so no. You, and, you, were, you were talking about the you know crop sensors and your yeah. original cameras, about, right? So, so crop sensor uh, cameras are a little bit less exp- expensive than full frame cameras because um, because they are because. <laughs> well, can I, can I jump in? So <laughs> yeah, please do. So because because um, full frame people might be saying full. What does that mean? Full full what frame? So uh, the full frame is a 24 by 36. uh, Bear with me, Glenn. It's metric system. Uh, uh, Millimeter. Yeah. Millimeter. Um, So 35 millimeter film was, is what it amounts to. So full frame, meaning the same exact size of what 35 millimeter film used to be. Cause it's, so that's become kind of the, the gold standard de facto standard of a, of a size of a, a film to get, you know, pretty good results from. So, in the ancient dark days of digital uh, interchangeable lens cameras back, you know, 2003, 2005, kind of in that range that Glenn's talking about, 
the cost of building those sensors was extremely high. It was all new, and you know, every every six months they were coming out with new generations that had you know higher megapixel counts, et cetera, et cetera. So there was a huge price uh, expense to having a a um, digital sensor that was the size of thirty five millimeter film. So what the manufacturers did to make it more affordable was they came out with something called APS C, which is cropped sensor, uh, which is basically a a fraction uh, or a you know say a quarter, I guess roughly uh, of the uh, of the 35 millimeter size, uh, maybe a little bigger. I don't even know now. Quarter to a half, somewhere in there. But it, but it is a smaller version of that sensor. So, uh, and it has certain effects on the kinds of pictures you take. You know, it's uh, and I don't, I don't think we're going to go that much depth, uh, eh, ironically, no. uh, in this show. But, but um, you know, going back to what I was saying before about the spectrum of kinds of pictures you could take, they'd still take great pictures, but. Uh, you were that had some um, concessions uh, by being a smaller sensor size, right? There's more what they call noise in the picture, and you know it's basically you, there's some trade-offs to getting that. But it but it put interchangeable lens digital cameras in an affordable state for a lot of people. Yes, it did. So so moving forward, you know, but but it seems like the push is always you know can we get to full frame, right? That's what at least right. in, in my world and my history is like. These cropped sensor ones, the APS-C, APS-C ones are nice, but boy, once you get to full frame, quote unquote, in the size of 35 millimeter, mm -hmm. you know, you those, some of those concessions that you were having were, were going away. And yeah. we've reached a point now where technologically, manufacturing wise, they can make full frame sensors for roughly the same price as they can make the cropped ones for. So there's kind of this move now in the photo industry of kind of going going to full frame as, as a bit of a standard. Still, They're still very much on the expensive side, but things are kind of shifting in that in that direction. Right. And, and, and also in the last, mm, what, six years or so maybe, um, uh, there's there's been also a move to uh, mirrorless technology. So um, in the SLR cameras, there's a, uh, there's a mirror that uh, actually mechanically goes up and down. Um, and so the last camera I had, the Sony a 6,000, which is, it's an awesome camera and I love it. And it, uh, but, um, it's mirrorless. And so it can, it's a lot smaller than my previous Nikon D 7,000. Um, you, <laughs> you put them side by side and it's like, Whoa, it's a huge difference. Um, and, uh, I, I really enjoyed the, um, the Sony, uh, but I've gotten to a point now where uh, I needed something. I needed to take the next step. Um, and, and as Chris can attest, I don't take those steps uh, lightly. <laughs> I do uh, a lot of research. I do. I, I don't, you know, impulse buy uh, this stuff. And, um, and, and so for everybody, when you generally, when you, uh, when you either change manufacturers or change from, uh, you know, one type of camera to another, um, you have to, you pretty much have to buy, you know, you're buying into a whole new lens system as well. Um, and that's, that's where the costs get, um, kind of higher because when I went from my first, my Nikon D50 to my Nikon D7000, all the lenses still worked for all of that because they were, um, they were the exact same, uh, lenses for, for the exact same kind of sensor. Um, when I moved to Sony, uh, I did have to buy into that, uh, system. And so, I, so when I moved to Sony, I had to buy, uh, new lenses for it. Uh, so it's, it's not inexpensive, uh, to, to do this. Yes, you can sell your old stuff. Um, but it, it's, it's a big decision to, to switch to something else, to either a different manufacturer or a different, um, uh, sensor size. So, or, or some of us just see life as temporary and <laughs> just go with the flow and consider it all just rental fees, uh, because there you, you can't go. take it with you. So, um, it is, there but it's, go. it's like switching, moving countries, right? I mean, so yeah. you, know, you got to sell yeah. a house and buy a house and right. You know, all that stuff. So, um, yeah. but it's a painful switch. And believe me, the, the camera manufacturers know this and do everything they can, just like, just like computer technology companies do everything they can to try and keep you in their, in their camp. So, um, you know, we were both in that, in that situation where, where Sony was really taking the lead of, you know, these mirrorless systems, which, which I've always explained to people that if, if cameras didn't exist, 
And today with today's technology, you said, I want to design a camera. You would design it like these mirrorless cameras because you're, you're looking through a, a, a digital viewfinder, a screen, and rather than looking through some weird set of optics and mirrors, et cetera, uh, looking exactly what you're going to take. Uh, the cameras are smaller and lighter, and, and they just do fancier things. Uh, so if you were designing them from scratch today, they would look like that. The, the traditional uh, mirrored um, SLRs, DSLRs, um, they're, they're kind of a, uh, an evolution because they were, they were designed when film what mattered and, you know, the optics of keeping the light off the film until you're ready to take the picture, blah, blah, blah. So uh, they're more modern cameras. So Sony really had the edge on that. And everybody's for years was like, well, where, where are Canon and Nikon? Why aren't they making anything like these? So uh, I think Sony started to seal more and more kind of uh, mind share and, and, uh, mm -hmm. and professionals uh, started moving away from Nikon and Canon, you know, the big name, uh, the big name brands uh, over to more mirrorless. And so, uh, Canon and Nikon finally woke up and started introducing their own mirrorless stuff, right? Yep. All right, your turn. Okay, so so yeah, so uh, I was my I was going back and forth between um, going moving up to Sony's full frame camera. Um, so, so you had a crossroads, right? You're like, okay, yeah, I was I, absolutely. I, I know I like mirrorless. I've yeah. got Sony. I yeah. like Sony. Sony's probably the leader in mirrorless right now because they've been doing it the longest. Yes. But now, you know, other there are other manufacturer options. So you were you were going to move to full frame, but then it's like, yeah. well, which brand do I go with? Uh, and it was almost fresh start because the because lenses for crop sensors are not the same as lenses for full frame, et cetera, et cetera. So you almost had a right. square one kind of situation, right? I did, yeah. So right, even if I had stayed with Sony, my lens, my current lenses wouldn't really work. So um, so whatever I was going to do, it was going to be a full, yeah, jump into the pool, uh, either way. And, um, so yes. Yeah, so, and I mean, good goodness. It's been, man, I, how many months you've been, we've been uh, talking about this. Yeah, I don't know. Exhausted. I know, time. right. Probably six, eight months or so. So, well, um, it really, it really came up at least in my world in back in August of eighteen, mm -hmm. uh, because Nikon introduced their and introduced their version of mirrorless. Um, which in, and why this makes a, this a particularly difficult thing for me to help with is that I have a uh, very irrational brand loyalty to Nikon. For when when I grew up, um, Nikon was the professional system. And uh, when I sold cameras in high school, I sold cameras in, in college, I worked in camera stores, uh, they were the brand. And, and it was, you know, at that point, Canon was just starting to come up as, as a competitor to that. But in, in my brain, in my heart, and rooted way, you know, in the depths of my photo uh, uh, history, Nikon has this place of that is, uh, that is my brand. Uh, and so it's very hard to make sure that I'm not coloring my, my impression of their of their cameras and lenses just based on my, on my affinity to that brand. And I know uh, there aren't a lot of things that I have uh, uh, brand loyalty, uh, Nikon and, and maybe uh, Coca-Cola would be the <laughs> two biggest mm -hmm. ones. Don't give me a Pepsi. Um, uh, so that's really hard for me. So to give advice to somebody, it's like, it's like, that's my go-to place. I'm going to say yeah. Nikon just cause that's uh you know, and, and they are the official photography company uh, sponsor for Disney world. So that doesn't hurt, but, um, True. so that's why it's hard for me. So, yeah. uh, but even with that, I, you know, Nikon came out with their stuff in August and it was like brand new and I'm scratching my head and, and saying, you know, I'm shooting Sony. But even at that point I said, no, you know what, I'm going to do the sensible thing. I'm going to stay with Sony and keep shooting them. <laughs> Um, uh, but, uh, a couple of months ago, it just, it got the better me. I'm like, I got to at least try out the Nikon gear. And then I did. And then whether it's just brand loyalty or just because the gear is that good to me. And it, and a lot of this is a very personal decision because it depends on how things, you know, feel in your hand, the ergonomics of camera systems really matter. It's more than just, you know, is it comfortable to use it? It can really change your kind of mood and, and how, um, how kind of soaked into the, of taking pictures you are is you know, how comfortable it is. Is it feel like an extension of you, et cetera. And it may be that I just shot Nikons for so long that their sort of industrial design kind of is along those lines. So for me, it naturally felt comfortable. I'm like, Oh, it kind of felt like going home again. So I decided after shooting it a couple of times and, and Glenn mentioned, you know, going to Epcot a few times, I did some kind of trial runs out at the parks and everything. I was just, I fell in love with uh, the Nikon Z series mirrorless cameras. So that's kind of where that started. So that, that was kind of the, what, what started this back in August was the introduction of this new system. And then, you know, just uh, timing wise, and now we have Glenn trying to make a decision of which, which branch to go now. Right. 
Exactly. And so I was going to, um, like you said, you know, the logical choice right this second is probably, you know, for me blindly, uh, would be to stick with Sony because they have the lenses, they have the technology that they've been working on, um, everything else. So everything for me pointed to Sony to, to go with Sony. Um, so I was, I, I was prepared. Uh, I think at one point I actually did put it in my cart to, you know, <laughs> to go, go to the checkout. Uh, and, um, I said, well, you know what? Let, let me hold on a second. And because you had gotten the Sony, um, uh, sorry, the Nikon Z6, I wanted to, before I did anything, I wanted to get your thoughts and impressions on that camera since you'd have hands on on it um and and you do you do have or you did have the the sony um uh, a7 three a7 r mm-hmm. yeah you can jumble up whatever order you want yeah i know uh, th- <laughs> th- their, <laughs> their latest um high resolution uh mirrorless camera right a7 r3 yeah so roughly the so same. so you so once you had the nikon uh, Z6, you had hands on, you, you own both systems and both, you know, both cameras. And so you actually started putting, putting, putting together notes, uh, on your impressions on the Z6 and, and you shared them with me and, and it, that was very kind. And, and no, I, I read that. them, which huh? I, I don't know if they were kind, but, but I did it for me cause I, I needed to make it a, an objective evaluation of, it because I really, like I said, it is not a, a, my brand loyalty to Nikon is not small by any stretch. So I had to kind of separate that out and try to make a real objective evaluation of, of the gear that I was trying. So and I, mm-hmm. I just, it wasn't written for you. In fact, I, I wrote it thinking maybe, maybe I'd post it somewhere. I never did, but um, try to do as much of an objective evaluation of it as I could. Yeah. And, and I read it and I said, Chris is uh, crazy because he just likes Nikon <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm not listening to him. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with the Sony typical. Yeah. And then something happened. <laughs> what happened okay. was you went to, uh, Epcot and you took photos probably. And the first set was uh, a few weeks ago when you went to the, um, the art festival mm, yeah. and they were great. They were good, but I was like, uh, nothing here is really, you know, blown these are all terrible off. pictures. They're not, they, no, they certainly weren't terrible, but, but it there was nothing there that really pushed me over the, the edge. Mm-hmm. However, you went back out a couple of weeks later, um, and you, <laughs> those pictures, that set of pictures, <laughs> Um, or what did it for me. And I, and from that point on, I was like, okay, uh, I'm, I'm going with the Nikon. Hmm. And it was, what it was, was the sharpness in the eyes, mm-hmm. um, in multiple pictures of, uh, your children, uh, and your wife. And when I looked at, I zoomed in and I saw how clear and how sharp those pictures were. I had never gotten anything like that from, any camera I've ever owned. Um, and in your pictures that you took with the Sony uh, on your cruises or whatever, I didn't see that either. Mm-hmm. Um, and so whatever magic sauce <laughs> Nikon has um, and, and the, the, the photos you were taking were with essentially the, you know, let's call it the kit lens. Mm-hmm. Um, not a special lens, not anything fantastic. The lens that, uh, you know, pretty much comes with it. Well, that's what pushed me over the edge. I don't know. It's not. Uh, yeah, but let's put it in its right spectrum. It's not. You, usually, a kit lens means like you're buying. Uh, you know, yeah. a, a consumer level camera and right. a lens in there that might sell on its own for like three hundred dollars, right? Yeah. So, right, right. But this lens, because these these cameras are geared more towards semi professionals, advanced amateurs. You know, mm-hmm. as professional in some cases. You know, kind of that spectrum. So this quote standard lens kit lens on its own goes for like a thousand dollars so yeah. it's not i mean it's not uh it's certainly <clears throat> no. no slouch but but right. part of the key is of you know in in designing this new technology nikon completely re- you know and we'll geek out on this for a while but um just yeah. some of the histories Ni- nikon has had the same mount the same way that their lens is connected to their cameras for literally uh half a century right since the 50s um, Canon had evolved that over a couple of times, which is where they, they got some 
benefit from that in their in the science of their lens construction and sort of design. Uh, so to kind of carry them forward into the future, and this is one of the reasons why I really think, um, um, for at least for me, I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything, but for me, mm -hmm. Nikon was a good uh, first stepping stone for the future is they have a completely new mount that they've redone so that their optical scientists have more uh, more tools in their toolbox, so to speak, from a, from an optical science kind of standpoint. So uh, that's where I think a lot of the quality from these lenses particularly are coming in is because this is a whole new technology and sort of... Um, how they can design these lenses. So, um, you know, and, and also when you, when you look at, um, brands, uh, there is, there is a difference in the sort of look and feel of their lenses themselves. You know, Canon gear has a certain look to it. Nikon gear has a certain look. Sony has a certain look. And at least for me and what I want out of my images, I still feel like Nikon has, uh, and Canon as well, but I just, I, uh, as much as I love Nikon, I, I have an aversion to Canon. Not that they're, you know, it's not great. It's just not, not for me. Uh, but but I still think, even though on paper Sony has a lot of lenses for their system, I don't think optically and 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 output wise they're objectively as good as uh, what you can get with Nikon or Canon lenses. I, I'm sure I'll get a lot of hate mail for that, but that's uh, that's my impression on it. So that's where I think a lot of the quality from these these images are coming from. Yeah, yeah. So so um. So I saw those photos and I'm like, okay, I, I'm going to make the jump at some point soon. Um, and then Sony, once again, I almost, I, I think I had it in my cart, but for whatever reason, I removed it. And then like literally the next day, uh, you sent me a, uh, a note that said, Hey, um, Nikon's going to start giving the, if you buy it in, a uh, the kit, the camera, and there's an adapter that will allow you to uh, put on any Nikon full frame lens um, and use it on the Z6 um, that normally retails for $250. They are now giving that away if you buy the kit of the adapter and the, and the camera. And so, Saving two hundred fifty dollars was uh, uh, a good proposition, but also more than that, um, being able to to you know because the lens selection is pretty limited because it's a fairly new system and they're still developing the the lenses. Um, it it allows you to to get the existing full frame lenses and use them, and so so that's that did it, <laughs> and so uh, I. I went ahead and uh, it's finally. Like, it's almost like they planned it that way, Glenn. I like, know, right? <laughs> they they were listening. They they knew my, what I was uh, uh what I was waiting on. So so I got it and I got it uh, last week, and so I took it out for a test drive this past weekend, and I, I can't say enough about like I'm it's still I'm shocked at how good of a camera it is. Um, the, just the image quality, the sharpness, um, as you've mentioned, um, the colors. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so the workflow is I take the pictures and then I bring them home. I put them into, uh, Adobe Lightroom and I organize my photos. Uh, but I also, you know, edit them, uh, crop them and, and do some corrections on them. And the images in Lightroom, um, what I was having to do with all my previous photos from the Sony and, and everything else there, there absolutely was color correction, a lot of, um, exposure correction and, uh, contrast and highlights and everything else. <laughs> there's, there's not much I have to do. Like literally I'm, I, and I'm still shocked at that too. I, I took pictures today and I'm, I brought them into Lightroom and it's like, there's like I, I I go to adjust and and it's like there's not much I have yeah, to see, do. I told you you thought I was crazy, but I, I but did I think you. you were crazy a hundred percent. And and so seeing is believing. It's I so th so there's um you know uh one one big feature for me uh because my kids are in school and there's you know some theater performances and there's you know uh, graduations and everything else. Um my my other camera it clicked every time i took a picture and so this has 
as does the Sony uh, full frame. Um, but it has silent shooting. And I was worried that, you know, it might be a gimmick, but I tried that as well. And the, the images are just as good as when it's not on silent shooting. So I can literally take photos. People like my wife was like, wait, are you, you just took some pictures of me. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I did. Yeah. It's it, like, it's completely silent. And so just everything I'm, I'm still, you know, trying to learn about it. I'm still fiddling with a lot of the menu options. Um, I'm still trying to get it set up. So it, it works for me, but Oh my God, it's, it is such a good camera. But so that we don't sound like it's too much of an ad for this specific camera brand, mm -hmm. just, you know, my general recommendation would be, you know, everybody's answer to what the best camera is may be different. You know, in this, in this case, uh, this, the, after using it for a while, this, it was clear to me that this was my, this was my camera and what I wanted out of it, but it might be a different answer for other people. But, but I think the yeah. key is, you know, try, try different things and learn and experiment and, Right. Over time, you start to figure out what what those things are important to you. Like in your case, silent shutter, which for me it's nice to have, but I I almost never use it. I, in fact, I only used it once, just as a as a test to let you know how it, how it was. But yeah, um, but yeah, so it's it's uh, you know the gear is important only in as far as it is um, their their tools to to do your thing. Just like you know artists have different uh, you know if they if they use paintbrushes, they probably have a, a particular brand of paintbrush that they like over others for reasons that are just because that you know works for them uh, that's best. So right. You know, but but some of the keys here are regardless of the brand that you're going to look at is, you know, looking at um, if you are looking to step up, try to spend the time to see what kind of, you know, where is where is photography right now? What is sort of the uh, state of the art? Just like you might look at, at computers um, to see you know where they are. So you're not spending too much money to kind of buy into to old uh, technology um, and, you know, figure out where where the smart places are to spend money. And usually it's uh, it's not where you think it's not in the camera itself, but it's in the lenses for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, like I said before, you know, having some money to go do to go do things to go get those pictures so you can kind of get inspired to do them. And, you know, this is usually a Disney podcast. So a lot of times that's, you know, saving up some some money to go to the theme parks as well. So, yeah, it's yeah. not specifically about Nikon. This just happened to be our story and kind of where where we went. But, it, right. it, you know, the, your brand answer might be different. Right. And and as we talked about a lot earlier in the podcast, it the camera it matters, but, but whatever you do, it's, it's more about the practice and the actual, um, you know, uh, learning about how to take photos rather than the camera, especially when you're starting out. Yeah. Cause you know, you were talking about sharpness, right? So here's yeah. like a good example. Like if what you want is sharp pictures, right? You want detail in them. You, you know, there's like you mentioned eyes and portraits and, and that's what you're after. Then, uh, then clearly, you know, spending money on the glass because most of the cameras today can resolve a perfectly fine sharp Im uh, image. It's it's really comes down to more how much how much money you're going to spend on the lenses to get there. Mm -hmm. But you know, the thing is, you can get great pictures with blurry uh, images. You know, it's it's a style, right? Some some sure. people they shoot pictures on Instagram and use filters that that essentially kind of quote unquote ruin the picture, but give them a certain artsy look to them, etc. Mm -hmm. So you know, if we're, if you, if we're talking about if the point of photography is to convey emotion as an art, then you can do that with almost anything. People use pinhole cameras, for God's sakes, and and yeah. take some really amazing art with that. Uh, but that's a very narrow, again, going back to spectrum, that's a very narrow view of uh, the kinds of art that you can get out of that. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you can, if you, if you, um, you know, as you invest in the gear and you're trying to get the sharpest uh, resolving lenses that you can get and that you just keep widening and widening and widening how many circumstances you can get great photos from. Yeah. Right. So that is uh, my camera so, journey. So great. So when when you go into Disney and uh, share yeah. some pictures, when's that going to happen? I know, right? I, I like I I can't wait. That's my next. I know. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I know, but that's that's uh, now that I have this, uh, I, I want to get back <laughs> but, there. But you know, I joke. Pictures. But what I've noticed is, and it's only been it's not only started, but um, it seems like you're like uh, getting out a little bit more, like even in your hometown, which you yeah. you happen to live in one of the most photogenic uh, uh, cities around. So True. you got plenty to shoot. So 
even if, uh, you know, even if somebody can't make it to the theme parks, you know what, you know, it should do, not you, but one, one should do is go shoot mm. as much as you can in your hometown in your home state yeah. or wherever really, you know, and, and to point to Glenn's point earlier about the 365 project, know your gear, you know, Glenn, Glenn yes. was able to take some great pictures using the most, um, uh, modest of camera gear, uh, you know, 15 years ago because he knew what he could do with it and, and how to, how to use it and, and how to kind of manipulate the circumstances to get the kind of pictures he wants. So regardless of what you're using, even if the only thing you have is your camera on your phone, spend time learning about what you can do with that. And mm-hmm. then so that when you do, when, when you are ready for that big trip, then, then you're not trying to like figure it all out while you're on that trip. Uh, cause, uh, I know through experience that that never works. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, yeah, absolutely. know, know yourself and your gear before you get to a point where you need to know that. Yeah. You know, what we ought to do is, is somehow try to help people. Um, <laughs> okay. Teach I them, that's how, what we teach do them here. like you taught me, uh-huh. teach them how to take picture pictures. Okay. Uh, like a little, like a little like class, a little master class, a little, yeah, uh, something, something like that. that. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. What do you think? Sounds interesting. You think people would, uh, would want to see that? Oh, I think so. All right. Well, we should talk about that then. We should. You have your people contact my people. Okay. I'll do that. <laughs> All right. We'll see what we can do. So anyway, so yes, I'm back in the Nikon camp. Um, I, uh, when, uh, so Nikon became the official, uh, camera of Walt Disney World. Um, after I went to Sony, so I was <laughs> with used, Sony. It used so, to be Kodak, right? For forever and ever, right? Uh, it used, yeah, it used to be Kodak for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and then the, the photo pass photographers all had Nikon cameras, but they still, I think it was still all the photo spots and everything was still sponsored by Kodak. Correct. Um, uh, and I still had my Nikon then, but then I switched to Sony <clears throat> and then of course, uh, and, and I have severe brand loyalty to anybody who sponsors <laughs> Disney. So, yeah. um, uh, I still fill up with Exxon gas. Uh, do you really like that matters? Yes. To, like the gas in your car? Um, oh uh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Wow. Uh, you're the, a sucker. Like the brand of ketchup that they would use. I would Stop. use uh, that's no, seriously. I was no, no, no. I, 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 I'm not as bad now, but I absolutely growing up. Um, I would ever, Whoever sponsored anything at Disney, that's who I uh, who I bought so, stuff from. So if the world went topsy turvy and they switched to Pepsi everywhere, would you <clears throat> would you would your loyalty switch? Would you reconsider? Sure. Well, I mean, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't drink too much. Uh, well, yeah, it's a bad example, but, I guess. But yeah, uh, no, absolutely, I would. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to an extent, I mean, as Coke is still the greatest thing on the planet ever. <laughs> well, made. it's the worst thing so, ever. But yeah, it's the well, best, <laughs> the wor- it's the worst best thing ever. I didn't know you. Uh, that's that's kind of crazy. That brand loyalty is that strong with you, but you didn't know for that yeah, reason. Of I guess I get. I think every time I rediscover this, it's a it's to a level that I I, I didn't expect. Yeah. Well, you know what? There is one exception. Okay. <laughs> uh, for whatever uh, GM, I can't I can't stand <laughs> GM cars. They're okay. they're just I, I don't like them. You have and, your limits. Yeah. So that's kind of that's always where I've drawn the line. Um, I can't think of anything else. Um, but yeah, so like if Siemens, well, they don't even sponsor anything anymore, but, um, Mm -hmm. like, you know, if they had, so like they used to have what, uh, you know, Dixie plates or whatever, you know, the paper plates, whatever they had Dixie on. So that's what I would buy. Really? Wow. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I've always taken it to an extreme level. Yeah. But uh, I guess at least you're aware of that. It's extreme, but. Oh yeah, like I'm, I never even I'm, I'm completely insane. I'm not. I yeah. never said I was. I mean, I guess that's. I mean, that's why they have sponsorships, right? That's what sure. they're all about. So I guess sure. It, and it probably works on more more people than than I realize for sure. Yeah. Huh. I never even noticed what kind of plates they had. To be honest, at Disney MGM they had. Um, and when they were, it was Disney MGM. Uh, they had uh, Sony sponsored Superstar Television. Yeah. You remember that, right? And, and yep. so uh, I bought so uh, I, I bought Sony TVs. Wow. Okay. All right. Because they had Sony TVs up in the waiting area. Well, if I ever have a company I want you to buy some stuff in, I'm going to go get a sponsorship at Disney, I guess. D- go do that. Can't be a lot of money, right? Oh, uh, <laughs> I mean, it depends. I think yeah. I think Siemens was, I want to say, $10 million a year for 10 years. Wow, that's like a, trilli- that's like a trillion dollars. Yeah, I know, right? Wow. 
Wow, ten million a year! Holy cow! I, th- I think something like that. Yeah, it was insane. And that's a brand that, like, on a on a day to day basis, most people. It's don't not a really, consumer, right? Yeah. It's not a consumer brand. Oh, you know, I need to buy an MRI machine. Wonder, wonder which brand <laughs> right, I should buy. Exactly. Huh. Okay. Well, so yeah, cool. Anyway, well, it doesn't um, it doesn't hurt. I knew that would be the final hook to get you to tip over. Not that I was trying to, but just to point out that you know they are the the it, official. It certainly sponsor. didn't hurt. <laughs> Let, let's say that. <laughs> now I know your your kryptonite to get you to buy stuff. <laughs> Well, cool. Well, I'm enjoying it. So I have two requests for you. Um, and yes. obviously you don't have to, but, but uh, maybe people will be curious to follow along your photo adventures. So you should post those. But, you know, I was thinking, cause we we're talking about, you know, our love of taking theme park uh, pictures and there are, yep. there are some amazing photographers out there uh, that, that oh concentrate uh, a lot on, on the theme parks and, and to a point where I think you and I both have been like, you know what, we're just going to hang it up because you know, we can't uh, take pictures as good as that. Um, you know, but in a lot of cases, I mean, we could, but it's there, you know, a lot of cases they're just spending the time and, and the effort to go do it. But either way, you know, what we kind of need is on, uh, on Starport 75 to, if, uh, to get kind of like a, um, uh, a gallery, a, a list, a, uh, like a, like a, some sort of reference to like, well, who are, who are some of the most prominent, um, theme park related, uh, photographers out there? Cause there's some, some amazing work. Yeah, they do. Uh, absolutely. And, and I follow, um, I follow a ton of them on Instagram, on Flickr, um, even even on Facebook. I, I, I'm in a group that uh, that showcases a lot of great photos. Um, so there are there are a lot of them out there, and the reason I follow all of them is to give me ideas um, on you know what what I can shoot, and also try to learn. Um, uh, that's the one thing about photography is I. I'm always a student. I'm always trying to learn, trying to figure things out. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, I'm still jealous of what you can do. Um, and it's not always just, uh, it's not always just technical, right? I mean, um, uh, it's, it's, you know, you do a good job telling a story. I want to do that. And so it's just learning. And, And so seeing other people's photos, um, especially like on Flickr, uh, mm. cause you can see the camera they use, the settings they use, the mm-hmm. lens they use. Yep. Um, so it's like, wow. Okay. Um, so that's how they did that. Um, and so it, it's, it's, and so, you know, uh, you can save them as a favorite. And so you can go back, um, and, and look at them, uh, as a trip's coming closer. Um, so, and I've done that in the past. So, so anyway, so yes, I, I'll, I'll do that. I'll dig through, um, who I'm following and put some of the, the, the ones that I really like looking at and, and put them on the, I'll put them in the show notes, um, uh, for this episode. Cool. Awesome. So maybe we'll do more kind of ongoing uh, cause it, you know, there's a lot about photography is sort of general, uh, skills kind of based, but there's a yeah. lot of things specific about, uh, Disney park photography that, uh, mm-hmm. maybe we'll, maybe we should do like a, I don't know, regular segment or kind of re- recurring thing and kind of like uh, some some ideas and tips for that. I don't know. Yeah, I would love thoughts. to do that. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not what we want. It's what the people want. So we'll see. Yeah. Or maybe it is what we want. It's our show. <laughs> it is our show. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, welcome back to the fold, sir. And so far, it seems like it's been a good jump for it. Just uh yeah, it's, and it's, it's so hard light. to tell, you know, because because getting new and and I used to, uh, you know, I used to spend a lot of time, more time in music than I do today. But I get new, I play guitars and things, and and a lot of it is, uh, it's just getting new gear will sometimes like spark the creativity, kind of thoughts and juices and whatever. So you know, um, and not that the, it shouldn't be an excuse to like, hey, I need new gear to take good pictures, but it certainly is like, you know, we start thinking about it more and get kind of energized about it. So yeah, so so it's that too. Yeah, that's definitely happening with me right now because yeah. I can't, I can't wait to yeah, that's good. Uh, pick up the camera every day. I know that'll go away after time, but uh, like I said, I'm still amazed at at what this camera can do and what I, you know, what I can do with it. Yeah. Um, cool. So it's um, it's pretty cool. Always more to learn, like you said. Always more to try. That's right. That's right. Cool. Yeah. So this is like one big picks episode, is what this is. But are we doing? It are is. We doing picks as well? Or are we? Uh, no, no. Uh, I, uh, my I pick wanted, is an Nikon Z6. No, I want to do a pick. Okay, you can do a pick because it's for going you because it might interest you. All right. Okay. Go ahead. So, because um, along these lines, so we'll we'll keep it yes. in the vein of photography. So, um, you know, I consider myself what they call it. I'm an available light photographer. Right. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard that phrase? 
It's a very, it's a very lofty way of me saying that I don't like to use artificial lights, like flashes and things. Mm-hmm. I'm not a studio photographer. I'm, I'm like an environmental uh, available light guy, which means, uh, you know, I use my cameras and just whatever, whatever light uh, the world has put out. I use that, which in a lot of cases works great. A theme park outside is, uh, is fine, whatever. Um, the problem that really comes in is when you're doing like indoors and, uh, to, to really bring this back to Disney, um, the, over the, over the weekend, uh, was one, um, my, uh, one of my son's birthdays and we went and did a character breakfast at, uh, this hotel called the contemporary that uh, you, you've probably Ooh. heard of it. People out yeah, there. Yeah. Vaguely. Yeah. They have this place called chef Mickey's, okay. uh, where they do, uh, where they do a character breakfast, uh, which they Don't have the characters that. out there. Glenn, oh, okay. this is the, this is the biggest shakedown of money I've, I've ever seen. And, and this what? is, I don't, I don't know how I've let this happen, but this has become a, uh, a tradition yeah. in our family where now we do a Christmas and each of the boys' birthdays, we go to a different character breakfast. Yeah, that's and, insane. And, uh, you know, I know we complain about Disney prices a lot, but I swear to God, I, I think they recently jacked up the price of the character breakfast. Do you, do you know how much a character breakfast costs? Um. Okay, guessing I would say for adults, uh, character breakfast, 60 bucks a person oh, and no, kids... No Forty-five. Nah, you're no fun. You, you guess too high. Why? You, you were it? supposed to say like oh, you know, eighteen dollars, and then I would be like, "Oh no! Oh Glenn, no! Oh my god! Oh, that's that's <laughs> too reasonable, Chris." <laughs> no, but I, I swear these went up uh, a lot recently. It was forty-eight dollars per adult and thirty-eight for kids. I think uh, you know uh, up to nine. Yeah. Uh, which, which understand if you haven't done these, like, especially at chef Mickey's, the food is just the most, um, uh, you know, boring kind awful. of buffet. Yes. Food. It's, it was not awful, but I mean, it's, and, well, and it's, di- I mean, but it's different from different places. Like over at the, at the, uh, at 1900 park fair, mm-hmm. uh, you know, for breakfast, they'll, they have a chef there and you can like have a fresh omelet made and, you know, this, this thing, but at chef Mickey's, it's like literally, uh, like, uh, just buffet food, right? It's just like a, yeah. know, a whole bunch of powdered scrambled eggs for you or whatever they make right. out of. But anyway, but that's not the point. The whole point is the characters and the pictures and all that. So let me get yeah, this yeah. back to photography. Stop distracting me all with right. the Disney hate. So, <laughs> so we we do this thing, and uh, man, the other thing that really frustrates me about these is they they really try to turn over the tables fast. Um, like you know, mm, like mm-hmm. bang bang bang, let's get them in, get them out, get in. Did you see everybody? Did you get all the characters? You done? Okay, good. Get out of here. Yeah. Uh, so it's a bit uh, it's a bit uh, frantic, which uh, which for me is I, I hate that with taking pictures because I'm like you know I'm, I don't know how to use these dials and stuff. Just hold, slow down uh, and take these. But anyway, I digress. The point is I'm taking pictures of the kids with the characters inside, and specifically at Chef Mickey's, just the way the little kind of lighting is, and because uh, it's a mixture of uh, skylights and some some kind of very um, um, almost like spotlight lights inside, it's very contrasting. I don't know if you notice this looking at at my shots, but um, you know, there's, there's a, you know, it's very contrast, a lot of dark and a lot of light. Mm-hmm. And so what I need to do as a photographer is I need to get more comfortable using artificial lighting, right? Using like a flash on the camera, right? But here's the thing. If you just buy a flash and you smack it on the camera and you point it at the people, boom, it puts out this giant burst of light and it's the most obnoxious thing ever, right? It looks terrible, mm-hmm. right? So what I like to do is what they call fill flash, which is where mostly the camera is taking the picture with available light, but you're doing a little bit of just a little sous if you will, a little a little dash of light to throw into the shadows and things, just to just to lower the contrast a little bit to fill in the shadows so that they don't have like dark circles under their eyes and stuff like that. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. So that's fill flash. Do a little bit of that, mm-hmm. and I'm getting to my pick in a second. It's a long way around, but just bear with me. So in outdoor pictures, and a lot of people might say, well. Well, Chris, why would you why would you use flash outdoors? But you know what? Look at the Nikon photographers, the Disney PhotoPass photographers, if you will. Um, well, when they're at the park, all the ones outside are still using flash because what they're doing is they're filling in with the fill flash just a little bit more, you know, just so that it's not so harsh from the sun and all that stuff. And outside is fine. And here's where I'm going to try not to go too deep into into the photography science. But um, you know, outdoors there's a particular temperature of light, right? There's a, it's a it's a it's a more of a bluish light um, mm-hmm. outdoors. But if you go indoors with like artificial light, it gets to be more more orange, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we've all seen this. So it's, uh, again, it's a long way around. But um, so what I've discovered that I was trying to do, like I was trying to do fill flash indoors, but they still look terrible. I'm like, why do these still look terrible? And I realized because I'm tossing out a whole bunch of blue light from the flash, but all the ambient light is more orangish you with me yeah you with me so far okay yes i am so what i decided to try is i bought a pack of of gels if you will Mm -hmm. and i know you you folks at home can't see this but but i think glenn can so uh these these are uh from uh 
from a company called Rogue, which uh, right there, I'm like, yeah, I'm in. Um, yeah. uh, Rogue Flash Gels Correction Filter Kit. And it, it's a really simple thing. It comes with this whole spectrum of uh, different colored gels, all the way from like uh, pure white through the blues and then uh, through different levels of uh, kind of orange. Mm-hmm. Uh, and these kind of retrofit around a, a standard flash. Um, so what I'm going to experiment here with is take some of these that are in the orange spectrum, put them around the flash a little bit, dial my flash way back. So all I'm doing is just popping in a little extra light. And then I'm hoping with the, with the balance of this and then with another gadget I've mentioned before, which is like a thing that kind of softens the light from a flash. Cause that's the other problem with flashes. It's so harsh. It's not only the wrong color, but it's harsh. Uh, but you put something kind of like a soft box thing in front of it or something like that it should soften it. So I'm hoping with this gel, I've used the soft box thing before, but I've never used these gels. Uh, but I'm hoping I can I can kind of get the get the color and range that it kind of blends in a little bit better. Anyway, so that's that's a uh, that's my pick. I haven't uh, it's sort of a pre pick, but uh, they got mm-hmm. pretty good uh, review. I think they were like twenty or thirty bucks. Uh, but there's like I don't know a dozen or so different uh, gels at different levels. And the thing I like about it, they show you like what your exposure adjustments should be based on the gel and things printed right on it. Um, so we'll see. Eighteen filters, three attachment bands, little storage thing. So the rogue flash gels, that's, that's my pick. We'll see how it goes. Cool. Yeah, I am not, that's one thing that's, that's still a learning opportunity for me is, uh, is flash. I, I, you know, I've, I've used a flash in the past. Um, I have a, Hey, will my, uh, will my Nikon, um, what is it? The 900 B or whatever. Oh, from will that work on this? Uh, I mean, it'll work in some kind of, I mean, at very worst, it'll work as a manual flash, right? It'll yeah. synchronize fine. But if hmm. you want like the full through the lens thing, I don't know, it might have some like partial compatibility. I don't know. All usually, right. I'm just about that. usually with flashes, you kind of have to stay with the kind of current, current set, but I actually don't okay. use, I don't use Nikon branded flashes cause it's kind they're kind of generic. I mean, you really, mm-hmm. as long as it's putting out the right kind of the right amount of light and whatever, um, and as long as it's compatible with the camera. So actually, I think it was my pick before, uh, but I use these. Um, um, my latest pick are Godox, I guess they're pronounced, G-O-D-O-X. Uh, but they're very uh, cost effective. They're probably about a third the price of a Nikon branded flash. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, that, that would be my pick. And they have this neat sort of synchronization uh, technology. So if you did want to get fancier and kind of have multiple ones to some sort of little small studio setup or whatever, they, they handle some of that. So. I don't I actually don't recommend Nikon flashes. I mean, they're, they're great, but they're, you know, you might spend, you know, $200 oh. for one of these Godoxes and it'll be literally $800 for the Nikon version. So. I know. I, cause I paid a ton and not that much, but I mean, yeah. it was a uh, probably yeah, f- maybe 400 or so, yeah, somewhere there, right? um, way back in, you know, uh, 12 years ago on yeah. one. And that's a case where you can, you, you know, lenses, certainly you want to buy the highest quality you can, um, flashes. Yeah, I mean, unless you're really, like, unless you're a professional wedding photographer or something, where you're really relying on that flash, you know, for your livelihood. For the most case, they're all they're all kind of doing the same job, and they're a bit of a commodity. So yeah, but but in my case, you know, and and I've I've heard other photographers joke that you know, uh, quote unquote, available light photographers are really just photographers that don't know how to use flashes. Um, so I feel a little bit like that because I just kind of fumble with them. So I'm gonna make kind of a yeah. concerted effort to to know my tools and uh, use them to my advantage. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, I, that's that's a uh, future. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. Or I may just say, I'm an available light photographer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So right. anyway, so that's uh, that's pretty much the episode. Um, uh, hopefully everybody stuck around and uh, gleaned some information from this. Um, but uh, Chris and I were going to have this conversation anyway. Uh, so so we said "Eh, let's go ahead and record it and and, uh, hopefully our audience will appreciate it as well and I'd love to see what people do you know if you have pictures you're particularly proud of or or if you have questions and say you know what just I'm just trying to get that picture at the Hall of Presidents and I don't know what to do then uh, you know right right in uh, let us know we'll see see if we can help yeah all right cool I gotta go shoot some pictures the day's almost over and uh, I gotta I don't have my picture for the day (laughs) there you go (laughs) All all right see you next time Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Starport 75. Follow Chris on Twitter and Instagram at CB Gray and Glenn on Twitter and Instagram at Dizwiz. Follow the show on Twitter and Facebook at Starport 75 and Instagram at the Starport 75. For all things related to the show, including show notes and links to connect with us, visit us at Starport 75. This episode is sponsored by Parkleap. 
Do you hate waiting in lines for your favorite rides at Disney World, Universal, and Disneyland? Of course you do. Everyone does. ParkLeap tracks current wait times for attractions in real time, analyzes them, and gives you immediate guidance on what to ride now and what to skip for a shorter wait later on. ParkLeap saves you time so you can do more, see more, and ride more. Many theme parks provide their own apps, which is great, but they only report the times. You'll only get information, you don't get guidance. Is that 40 minute wait good or bad? ParkLeap can tell you. ParkLeap also includes an interface that is clean, quick, and easy to use. Many vacationers travel to multiple theme parks, now one app does it all. Whether you're a local resident and annual pass holder, or travel great lengths once a year or every few years, you want to make the most of your time and money. This is the app to get to help you do that. Get ParkLeap in the Apple App Store. And thank you to Parkleap for sponsoring Starport 75.